Hello and welcome. My name is Bethany and today we're going to talk about a homebrew. <laughs> Surprise! I helped make a homebrew. So first of all, I want to say obviously thank you so much to the Topo Turtle community and uh, the Turtle Guild for first of all just introducing me to all of these really really cool and like super nice people and second of all giving me the opportunity and like opening all the doors this has opened uh just doing it in general i had a lot of fun with this project and i cannot wait to like do more okay i can't wait for the ones that we have coming i can't wait for all the ideas and all of the things and also the people that i get to work with like overall this experience has just been great and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So the module that we created is called Gift of the Web and it is made for four to six level 10 PCs in the D&D 5e setting. Um, again, it is a homebrew. So that includes NPCs, magic items, three encounters with lore and maps in various styles for each location. I do have a special treat for you guys. Actually joining me today are three of the leads that were working on this project with me. I was the map lead for this. And so the map that we're gonna look at today is called the Orb Weaver, and it's a tavern and an inn that is used in the module. What you're gonna see is not the full thing because obviously we want you to go look at the full thing, but you're gonna see the bottom portion that is back. In addition to this map, I also reskinned the final boss area map, and I also contributed a chunk of the writing. For this build, we are using Dungeon Draft and exclusively Forgotten Adventures assets. Now this module is free, but going forward, some of them are hopefully going to be paid for. And with that, I purchased a license from Forgotten Adventures in order to be able to sell those maps. So let's go ahead and meet up with the guys. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves uh, yeah. first and what your role was in the project? My name is Donovan, also known as Donnie. Uh, I was the lead of the entire project. So it started with a single drawing mm -hmm. and or it started with an idea by our friend uh, RPG Inspo. He, he like put an idea about a spider bow. I drew it like my own interpretation and then I kept drawing it weirder and weirder until someone wrote about it and then I went to Inspo and Beth here and I was like we should make a little thing about it just you know some like lore about it it'd be kind of fun then it got opened up to everyone else and then it went from lore to like this big thing to an actual adventure so we made the turtle guild channel on topo turtle discord and then we outgrew that and moved to a, our own Discord server. And now we're here. And that is how I am a part of it and somehow the leader of it. <laughs> so my name's Colin. Uh, I go by my business, Family Fantasy RPG. I have, make children's RPG. I have a children's 5e D&D module on DriveThru RPG. And I also make some 5e custom content. Um, but this, um, I don't, I mean, honestly, I don't even remember what, took me into the topo turtle discord i just maybe an instagram post or something i'd been starting to join some you know it may have been there's another discord that's a tabletop creatives and i think someone in there posted about topo turtle and i had been trying to get involved in more discords and so i went and checked out topo turtle and sure enough i was kind of outside witness to that whole make an item talk about it make up some lore and I think, I don't even know, Donnie, you might remember, I don't think, even think I really talked that much initially in the group, but I think you and I talked and I said, you know, I ride adventures. That's what I've been doing with this Dean, this homebrew stuff. And um, yeah, you're just like, do you want to ride an adventure? And I was like, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's basically how it happened. I came in tail end of this. I was doing stuff for my own thing. And then Donovan's like, hey, I got these monsters. They're not quite working out. Fix them. And I go, yeah, tell me something about him. And then he proceeded to not tell me anything useful for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's an exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> and then everything he did tell me was a lie. So it all got scrapped. <laughs> I had to start over. But in the end, I'm pretty proud of it. I, I like uh, I like the infection. I think that's a really cool feature. Mm -hmm. uh, that I mixed from a couple of different monsters. And it we just blended real well. Right. And you still really don't know how it's going to work. Like, we haven't even tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I think I think the with how much honestly the community has accepted it and Donna you said we're up to what 20 something downloads already oh ha no five <laughs> minutes ago we hit 50. wow all right well yeah so I imagine we're probably going to get a pretty pretty solid amount of feedback from the community and anything that you know play That's test challenge wise. To the community yeah that's the challenge to all of you watching this video is that uh you'd go give us comments give us feedback we need yeah it. absolutely we want it. i think it'd be cool to get like people who do streams see if anyone would be interested in running it with their group just like it there's yeah. streams that do one shots like there's i don't remember i've, I've seen a few of them yeah i mean they exist obviously <laughs> so brian the problem uh, with the journeyman is that you and andrew already know pretty much what's going to happen I know, I know three monsters. Have Have you not looked at a single thing? <laughs> no, I looked at the cover. And I'm like, yep, I'm well, sure that's, I'll go that's this good then. Point. Then if you not, don't then you if, don't know what's gonna happen, and that's fine. That's yeah. perfect. Because <laughs> if Donovan okay. doesn't if Donovan doesn't run it for us, us at some point, I'll probably cannibalize it in some way and incorporate it into my own campaign. Because <laughs> that's that's what I do with every single one shot. Every time Wizards of the Coast or anybody comes out with a cool one shot, I go through it and I cannibalize all of them. Yeah, I mean, I think I think a lot of DMs do that anyway, and I mean, we built it to to be up to the DM to change a bunch of stuff about it. You know, there are so many places where we're like, hey, you know, you can run it this way, but if your players are like a bunch of murder hobos, you can also run it this way. Yeah, even the uh, spider infection is a combination of other things. There's the slotty, uh, particularly the red slot, which I use as the base. Um, and there's a worm creature, I forget what it's called, but it's in Bolos. Uh, I took the two of them and again, sandwiched them together and then tried to flavor it with uh, the gift of the web, like the, the, the theme they all are going with to uh, create the infection type. So it, it has its basis in the books, right? It exists in other places, uh, it's pieces so that it would still be relatively recognizable and it would be overbound, but it's definitely flavored around the, the little little bit of information I got from Donovan. Again, most everything he said. Was just... Hi. For, for all of you wondering, Donovan and I know each other in real life. <laughs> sadly. Sad. Now it's sadly. Okay, okay. <laughs> Do you guys just play D&D at school? No. No. No, I was outside of school. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do anything in either situation. In both situations, um, we just berate each other. <laughs> Brian calls me fat, and I call him ugly because that's what our boss called us. <laughs> oh no! I feel like yeah, poor Brian's is... always getting picked on. Like <laughs> I am. It's you so guys are always <laughs> so mean to him. Yeah. It's so strange because at school it's always Donovan who gets the shit out of it. <laughs> but now he's got his online keyboard crusade friends who all stand yeah. up. <laughs> that's what it means to be the boss. That oh, that's what it means. I thought being the boss meant everybody shit on you behind your back. As long as it's behind my back, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, good, good. To qu to quote a song, I don't care what you think as long as it's about me. <laughs> megalomania i mean kind of coming back around so obviously uh brian you can't answer this question since you haven't read it yet but uh <laughs> donnie colin what are your favorite parts of the the adventure so i think my favorite part is the final boss fight with mazizi mm -hmm. because the players are just going to get <laughs> rid of the world <laughs> yeah spoiler alert uh Y'all are in for some some shit. It's like you walk up, you get the shit scared out of you by this giant ass spider, and then it like captures someone, and then there's more crap that happens, and it, that was very descriptive. I know. Yeah, I um, remember being in the planning meeting and talking about like how we wanted the final like the boss fight to go, and just the idea of like what if somebody gets fucking like yeeted into oblivion and then they're just like stuck and just trying to figure out how we yeah. were going to incorporate that honestly i think that's what sparked the end end you know so yeah spoilers again if you don't know what we're talking uh, about the fallen queen yeah 
yeah it was easy to fall in i i yeah. actually think that the first encounter is my favorite just I, I i i don't know i think it's more of the visualization of this like oh my god we're getting swarmed like just <laughs> overwhelming you love that moment as a dm you love that moment when you're on a map whether it be roll 20 or playing on a table or something and they say you like putting down 20 to 30 <laughs> tokens for something and they're like yeah. what are you doing yeah exactly yeah. yeah i mean it's level 10 obviously there's going to be things that they're going to do that's going to clear the way but okay. it's just it's designed to be this just kind of it, it does have an end but it's going to seem like wait how do we even get out of this? Yeah. Oh my god. I just went in and looked at the uh how many how spiders. The numbers? Are yeah, to be I know, going. right? It's literally 20 <laughs> in the first part. I mean, level in the 10. First like, wave. That's what the <laughs> Yeah, level 10. They're half they're half CR. They're they're you know, a twinned fireball if they're clumped right could do a lot of, you know, just yeah. clear them out. I mean, yeah, that's not I don't... how it's going to work though. Well, I'm hoping to DM if someone tries to do a fireball inside the tavern. Oh, totally. Yeah. The DM's going to be like, okay, you just blow up half the building. <laughs> you just have yeah. fun. Done. I mean, if you haven't seen the map, to... though, it is a, it's a well-built tavern. I'm, I mean, that yes. comes back to, again, how we wrote it where it was like, hey, um, we know that there are a bunch of people who are going to play this the right way. But if you have somebody who is not then here are your options yeah the first part first encounter is pivotal mm -hmm. to the whole theme of the book though because of that infection mechanic yeah it has so many options going forward like if they're just plain bit and like that's just the end then you know obviously they have to deal with that but if they are infected then that opens up a whole lot of other stuff yeah kudos to brian for coming up with the actual mechanic for it mm -hmm. yeah high five bro it's it's involved enough that like you do have to be kind of unlucky for it to happen yeah. it's not just like a oh man i messed up one roll i've got it you know like yeah there's a few things kind of have to go go against you yeah but this is where the swarm really comes into play and in that it's not you're not just getting hit once right exactly you get hit multiple times and it just stacks until you're truly infected yeah and i mean and that also opens up the option too where it's not just one person and like you could end up with an entire party infected that'd be pretty cool actually yeah <laughs> i just... mean like that's that's the dream, right? That's the dream. Just a well, bunch of spider hobos running through places, fucking shit up. Well, how else are you going to become the next champion? I'm, I guess. Yeah, take your face off, you know. Ugh. Oh wait, take Ugh. the other champion's face off, right? Ugh. Yeah. Well, the the key, and I use that word loosely, is apparently the first champion's face. Mm. Yeah. I'm just, I mean, could you, if it had been, like, you take your face off and put it on the key, like, what do you think they did with all the other ones? Like, is there just, like, a a bag somewhere? A pile. In, hey. in, yeah, I mean, maybe, temple, maybe we had that in update. One of the rooms, one of those empty rooms. Yeah, just it's just a pile. Yeah, just or a like pile the, of dried mask faces. The <laughs> hall with all the portraits. They just, like, stapled the face onto the painting. <laughs> Oh, this gross. is starting to get a little, little too Silence of the Lambs here. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it seems like every time we were planning anything in this module, we had to rein back the horror factor yeah. of it, you know? Like, okay, the, the, the mask thing is already, that's going to trigger some people. Yeah. The porcelain queen. Good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want people to go in and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> get that wow factor that way they know what that way the next time if it's not as bad they're like oh okay like i can roll with this this is fine well see set, set the bar high um, like each one is gonna have its own like atmosphere to it yeah to promote it we should do that meme i don't remember exactly what it's like a little, little cartoon that's the dumps like something's on fire everything it's a dog yeah the dog's yeah. On, yeah. in <laughs> the room okay. everything's on fire just have it be a spider let's get a little cartoon spider <laughs> like building is burning down and he's just like it's good, guys. Everything's okay. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> to transition into our next steps. Yeah, we're... so plans for future projects. Obviously, we have one in the making right now. Yeah. What's the, what's the ultimate goal? Donnie, this is your uh, baby. Like, I know you're really excited about everything. <laughs> my dream, I want people to think of the Turtle Guild when they think of homebrew adventures mm, i want them to be like hmm i want something new to play let's see if the turtle guild has anything okay that's my dream a collaborative yeah 
Brian, since you're, I don't want to say new, because obviously you did help, but you're also being a pretty huge part of the next one. So what about you? Are you? <sighs> I'm most excited about getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I've been doing a whole bunch, just a whole mess of homebrew for mm-hmm. my own private table stuff like that and a lot of them really like it. it ups the challenge ups the difficulty gives them something new something that some of my meta gamers can't prepare for mm-hmm. you know you always got the players wanting to read the monster manual and stuff like that so if you got some homebrew suddenly that can't happen so i've been doing it for a while and it eats up a lot of my time because i put so much energy into it and uh my wife's like you put so much time into it and it's, it's just a game but what if it won the game no more what if i got paid yeah it's like okay yeah let, let's see those dollars roll and then we'll talk right okay. well which is which is one of the reasons why we started uh the chronicles and, be, and because i know donovan because he was uh, he helped us out in the beginning he started this thing up it's uh it's great to be able to start making monsters start making all the other like mechanical stuff the stuff that has stats like right now got a, a bird race uh in the making that's uh setting that up trying to balance it and all the sea monsters and stuff that'll come up with that the adventure, as well as any vehicle mechanics. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited so for the monsters, are, for sure. Yeah, those, those are the kinds of things that I really enjoy making and doing. Um, I have a lot of experience at my home table doing them, and then it's just finding that to be a more thought, polished product, so mm-hmm. it's, it's nice to actually go out and see stuff like that. Have that you y'all are of, writing great adventures for. Yeah, what's up? Have you thought of doing a Patreon just for, like, weekly or something like monsters homebrew monsters if that's yeah so my group wants to do stuff like that it's we're just really starting out trying to feel out what everybody wants to do how it goes obviously some of you met um andrew he does a lot of really great art streams every friday uh he's he's really good at that kind of stuff i want to do stuff like that it's it's the commitment Mm -hmm. because i'd love to say oh i can pump out a monster a week but some weeks i can't pump out any and then other weeks i pump out five uh yeah. which i mean i could space them and stuff like that should, but I, yeah have them in your backup just on a week that you can't make a new one grab one from your folder of didn't get released yet yeah 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 we we want to get there we want to do we want to do lore videos and stuff like that we have uh chase's wife is a, a history major she oh, is nice. getting a degree in history so she can teach it to children <laughs> just in general just but, teach history to the people <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah she's really good she's got that narrative sense about how to construct realistic people right. cultures and societies and stuff like that so she helps uh chase our dm uh world build and stuff like that so and he's a musician so we're hoping that he can make up like maybe some ambient music and stuff like that it's it's really the process because everybody is in that phase of their life where everybody's moving out other parents home into their own place having kids so it's it's unstable times but we're all pitching in we're all centered around this hobby Right. that none of us can get rid of it's it's basically an addiction yeah i feel that if this is an addiction i've been like trying to get hooked for like <laughs> years now and just with this guild is like just stuck like 10 needles in my arm <laughs> i'm 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 hooked yeah i think i've mentioned it before i i've never been the type of person to be super heavy into um online communities but as soon as I found this Discord, literally I'm on it all the time. Self-promoting is a thing that I still, you know, need to work on. And it's hard to just kind of pop in somewhere and be like, oh, hey, by the way, you know, if you're into this, like, I know this is some nerd shit, but like, hey, check it out. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel that. I'm going to have to do something like that once I finish the Foundry adaptation for Gifts of the Web. Because mm-hmm. there's like a whole Foundry Discord. There are over 6,000 people <laughs> online right now. I'm on the Encounter RP Discord, and it's just always going. Mm-hmm. So I would like to talk a little bit about our current projects, just to kind of put it out there. Yeah, sure. So the the main one, is the, the West Kansas Sea, mm-hmm. is our adventure setting. Uh, think Colonial Caribbean. You got mm-hmm. pirates, you got gold, you got booze drugs <laughs> drugs yeah just say yeah. bird people Some drugs it's about to be a good time yeah we uh we have like a tropical bird race come in the works mm-hmm. yeah i'm excited um, for um adding some races and uh other kind of cool stuff to just throw in to expand it a little bit more than what we did for, dude, for the web are we gonna do 
we need to do some legitimate pirate subclasses. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Absolutely. Like some just don't even look at what what's out there because there's a lot of pirate subclass stuff out there. Yeah. Don't even look at it. Just just straight from no just just make it up. Let's just make it up out of thin air. One of them has to be called Sparrow though. Like I'm gonna leave hey, I will leave right now if we don't have one called Sparrow. Hey Brian, you want more work to do, right? <laughs> this could be I think this this doesn't have to be Brian. This could be like <laughs> anyone that wants to contribute kind of thing. Because honestly, those are the things that are hard to balance, right? It's the subclasses and sub races that are difficult to balance. Yeah. And I mean they do take yeah, out a little bit. Subclasses work. are the worst. Yeah, subclasses are very difficult to balance for sure. And I mean, you want them to be cool. That's homebrew, right? So you want them to be cool. It's so easy to have a heavy hand, and all of a sudden they're super OP. Yeah, and then you right. just broke yeah. it. And... Yeah, I think the most exciting thing in that world expansion is the flushed out ship mechanics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a huge fan of water combat. I'm hoping to to first do a lot of research, see what's yeah. out there, see what was the coast have done with Ghost of Salt Marsh, mm-hmm. because that's where they first started establishing or developed sea system. Right. But I have seen lots of homebrew and third party stuff where they yep. take systems that are not supported by DD. For instance, Matthew Colville's Stronghold Followers and the Kingdoms of Warfare that are coming out, the warfare system that he's made uh, for mass combat is is vastly superior to the mass combat system that came out in the UA. Mm-hmm. So those kinds of things Wizards has left for whatever reason, they really haven't handled any system stuff that supports those kind of niche categories. Sea mechanics, there really aren't a lot of vehicles, there really aren't a lot of heck, even mounted combat isn't really super strongly supported. Mm-hmm. Uh, kingdoms, warfare, politics, all those extra things, D&D really seems Wizards of the Coast really seems to be going down this path of, it's about dungeons, it's about dragons, yeah. it's about yeah. these, not simple because they don't have to be, they can still be complex, but these very well-defined, Tolkien-esque adventure stories. Right. Which are great. That's their wheelhouse, you know? They do it really right. good, that's their wheelhouse. They let other people, you know, it's a lot of work keeping up with what they do, they're letting other people do stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I'm really looking forward to it as far as what kind of ship design direction I'm going in. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping to we'll see how this goes. Make it edited. But I'm hoping to turn ships almost into a monster stat block mm-hmm. where it has reactions, legendary actions, and there are certain things that it can do in a round as long as it's being yeah. manned. So oh, yeah. people that are manning a ship cool. or action economy it'll have, um, similar to like layer actions and things like that. Also, yeah. Odysseys of Theros gave us the mythic uh, option, so like you could have it like as your ship is sinking, you can just start throwing everything in your cannons, pork spoons, the whole nine <laughs> yards. Remember the scene from Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah. They're literally just launching everything at the enemy ship. <laughs> uh, one guy gets a fork in his eye. It's, it's all kinds of crazy. So I'm looking to use as many diverse action-oriented type slots to really right. fill up those things. And taking from the warfare systems and other systems that we see come up and really try to give ships a life of their own. Because I feel like when two ships get into combat, the things an individual character pretty limited until until they get pretty high level. When you can start summoning tsunamis and other, mm-hmm. you know really large spell effects but i think it levels one through an individual ship is going to be way more important than what a player Mm -hmm. or a spell caster yeah and i I don't think there's also a lot of mechanics out there for you know ship combat that isn't like specifically war gaming but i think having the actual like ship battle mechanic is going to be something it's going to be hard to figure it out but i think it's definitely something really really cool that's gonna be a lot of fun yeah and additionally I want I want ships to be able to fight monsters. Like I want I want a ship to be able to shoot at a kraken and have it make sense. Could you imagine a sentient yeah. pirate ship? <laughs> I'm in yeah, a campaign right now that that's actually what what it is. There's multiple sentient pirate ships. Boat mimics. Let's go. <laughs> it's more like it's more like soul crystals. Yeah. I picture that boat from Pirates of the Caribbean. It like lifts up and opens up and just like closes on another boat yeah i think the idea of making them 
like monster stat blocks is really good idea and that when you're in ship combat rather than use your own stats you'd use your ships and that would work when fighting monsters as well mm -hmm. well I, I think there's several things we can adjust here actually i think i like I, that could work but i also like the idea of the legendary actions where it's like the ship has a uh, top of the initiative round. You know, it brings in the idea of having a crew. There's, you know, I've I've read some stuff lately about people saying how the economy in D&D games is so messed up, right? Especially the new 5e where magic is so limited. You're either, you know, you're saving up all your gold you're getting for stuff for that one magic. If you can find a magic item, you know, you're going to spend 10,000 gold on a magic item. And right. everything else is just pennies, right? But I, lo I love telling my group they go to a bar and it's like, yeah, you buy a room, you can buy a round for the entire bar. It's like two gold pieces, you know, like that's the economy in D&D. &D. Yeah. Gold, gold goes a long way. And this saying that now you've got a crew, you have to pay, you know, you have to, if you want your boat to be awesome, your pirate ship to be awesome, you got to have a crew yeah. and you got to pay them. But it's going to make you money too, though, right? If you take over another ship and loot it, you know. Yeah. And if you, if you, you know, kidnap another crew or if you don't pay your right. crew, then, you know, they're going to leave. They're going to mutiny and now you don't have a ship and also you don't have a crew. And if you keep not paying your crew, then that's going to get around and eventually nobody's going to want to work for you. Yeah, Tribality. They have a Seas of Vodari is one of their like third party 5e um, settings mm -hmm. and they do have some ship mechanics and cannons and and stuff like that so that's that can be another resource for you mm -hmm. brian you guys each can promote yourself or anything that you want so i uh family i have a website familyfantasyrpg.com on there you can see i have two main projects like i said i have a uh, on drive through rpg it's a children's 5e called fairies of the misclade um it's tiered so youngest down to like three it's like interactive storytelling you just talk and make choices and then then like tier threes older kids that's kind of integrate some of the 5e stuff and then i also do a collaboration with wildspire miniatures for a campaign world called heroes of salon okay cool donnie yes so clear thing to promote here is the turtle guild <laughs> Hop over to toboturtle.com, look up the Turtle Guild, and you'll find our wonderful adventure, as well as a map pack for that adventure. Yeah. Hopefully soon to come, a Boundary uh, Virtual Tabletop Adaptation. Cool. Brian? So yeah, you can find us over at uh, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, uh, under the handle Chronicles of the Journeyman. You can also find us in some of the D&D subreddits, where we post um, our own monsters, maps, and everything since we try to figure out what it is we want to specialize in. cool awesome thank you guys so much for taking time out of your days to talk about this i'm so excited uh honestly i think this was a great project um we got to meet a lot of really cool people so yeah thank you again for hanging out good work yourself Thanks. tavern is great <laughs> appreciate it thank you again so so much for anybody who watches this video and downloads the module as of now, Donnie's wish did come true, and there is a Foundry version of this module available, fully integrated. Um, you can get that from the Topo Turtle website. I will also be including anything that we mentioned in this video in the description box below, as well as a link to Colin's Family Fantasy RPG and the Chronicles of the Journeyman Twitch stream. If you're interested in anything that the guys talked about, go check them out. Again, if you would like to get your own copy of Gift of the Web, it is available at toboturtle.com. Just search for Gift of the Web. And as always, thanks for watching.